question? Well, I kind of, I wasn't there at that meeting, but I okay. can still make a, a move to approve the minutes of December 1st, 2020. Do I have a second? I'll second. Excellent. And that, who is that? Is that Noel? Noel. Excellent. Uh, Madam, Secretary, Madam Secretary, if you please call the roll. Douglas? Aye. Helmuth is absent. Nold? Yes. McClellan, absent. Pilak? Yes. Arkold? Yes. And Ballard? Yes. All right, great. So now we have approved minutes from our December the 1st, 2020 um, meeting. So it takes us now to correspondence. Madam Secretary, do we have any correspondence? Um, well, yes, we did. I did get something today from the Dropbox from a resident with some pictures that was addressed to the, uh, well, she has it addressed, please forward to zoning ordinance meeting on January 19th, 2021. And she had the ad for the public hearing attached to it. But um, I called her and this really isn't, doesn't pertain to the planning commission. It is more of a zoning issue. It has to do with parking. So we are handling it here on, on our end. I just wanted to mention it to you because you were in a roundabout way addressed on this, um, but it's, it really is not your, um, it doesn't fall under your purview. So okay. that's all I have. All right, so we don't need to file it then? No. All right, great. So this takes us to uh, one of the main things for tonight, and that is the uh, the public hearing. So this is the public hearing to hear from the public uh, any any comments or concerns that they that they may have with uh, the proposed uh, text amendments to several of our uh, zoning ordinances. Uh, and we have five of those in which five amendments that we're that we're looking at uh, uh, addressing and talking to tonight. And one of those is uh, the use standard related to the tattoo parlors. Um, the other one is a designed zoning district uh, or designated rezoning district for regulated use. Um, definitions or clarifications on the commercial vehicles. And uh, D would be, or the fourth one would be uh, clarifying fences. And then the last one, clear view area and clear corner visions. So, um at this time i'd like to make a motion to uh so let me stop let me let me kind of um step back for a second um so for the public for this um uh, for the public hearing to hear from the public uh whoever would like to talk or provide comments um please uh joe will unmute unmute anyone please state your name and then also uh the city that you live in and then you'll have three minutes to uh, discuss or basically explain or have give your comments of what uh, questions, not maybe questions, but concerns or statements that you have related to any of the uh, proposed changes. So um, I would lay, I'd like now to make the motion to open up the public hearing at 7.15. Mr. Chairman, I would second that motion. Excellent. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you please call the roll. Douglas? Aye. Helmuth? Is absent. McClellan? Absent. Pilak? Yes. Nold? Yes. Arkold? And Ballard? Yes. Uh, so, um, uh, Joe, if you'd please unmute us to begin the process of hearing anyone's uh, uh, concerns or statements? Is there anyone in the audience that has any I'm sorry, just comments? I, was mute, I was muted. So my first uh, person on mine is Sue Basardi on my list. So Sue, if you have any comment? No, thank you. Okay, the IC, our, our Village Council, Lori Bourgeau, you're on. Do you have any comments on the public hearing? No comments. Thank you. Okay. Um, I see a Nathan Shevick. Mr. Nathan, do you have any public comments? No comments. Thank you. Okay. Um, that is all I really see other than the members and staff on here, Mr. Chair. 
Okay. So it appears that we have no uh, no comments from the from the public. So if we have no comments from the public, then I guess I will. Uh, uh, I'd like to move to close public hearing. So do I have a motion to, to close the public hearing? Mr. Chairman, I'd make that motion. We we exit uh, public hearing. Do I have a second? This is Pilak. I'll second that. Excellent, Madam Secretary. If you please call the roll. Um, okay, and we'll, that will be at seven seventeen p.m. Pilak. Yes. Arkles. Yes. Ballard. Yes. Douglas. Aye. McClellan and Helmuth are absent, and Nold. Mr. Nold. Did we lose him? I think we did. I don't see him on my list. Oh, there he is. He's, oh, he's on there. <coughs> just video, but doesn't even show a, a microphone at all. So I'm not uh, he's, sure. he's just muted. Uh, okay. Well, I don't even show a microphone on him. I see a microphone. There he is. Now he's unmuted. Go ahead, right. Mr. Noel. My screen just went blank. I just re-entered the meeting. Sorry. Oh, all right. Um, we just took a roll call vote on motion to close the public hearing and yes. uh, I called your name. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And then uh, last Ballard. Oh, did I not say Ballard? I thought you were second. Okay. Yep. Ballard. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, the public hearing is now closed. All right. Um, Commissioners, do you have do you have any questions related to any of the uh, any of the pro the proposed changes to the amendments? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, do we have a presentation from our uh, our planner in regards to these changes? Mario. Uh, Mario. Yes. If you'd like, I can go over them very quickly. Um, I'd love to, you know I'd love to hear it if you don't mind, Mario. If we have time. Sure. And then, uh, Mr. Chair, I was just wondering in terms of, because this is the first time we've attempted a, um, a batch of several zoning amendments. Yes. So I guess I would either ask you or um, the, the clerk if, if the motions for approval at some point should be individually for each amendment or should they be, or would it be appropriate to do one uh, motion at a time? Because that might lead our discussion. I, I was thinking that uh, I was thinking the exact same thing. If we should, if we were going to do them individually, or if we were going to do them as one uh, as one whole, I think it might be best if we do just do them individually. And this way, we can take each one. It's, it, it should be pretty quickly to to go through it because this is something we've talked and discussed about uh, these small little changes, just for uh, updating and clarification. So I, yeah, I would agree, I would agree with that, um, Mr. Chairman. Yep. So let's take them individually if we can. So, uh, Mario, if you could start us out with, I would, I would call it Amendment A. Amendment A, kind of, I know there's a couple different spots related to it, but if we could take it from there. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so basically, for the new members and in the public, basically, we through the um, review of the zoning ordinance, there are small minor amendments to address small minor issues, and rather than go through and have a separate meeting for each one, we've bundled them together to try and uh, be a bit more efficient. So the first one, Amendment A, is regards to tattoo parlors. Basically, we've had several um, beauty salons and other people apply for um, a certificate of occupancy, and they like to provide certain types of services, such as uh, microblading or um, uh, permanent makeup. And we found that the zoning ordinance language was very specific, and it actually would um, cover that type of service. And within the current zoning ordinance, tattoo parlors were considered a regulated use, meaning they were only allowed uh, in certain locations and would have to go through a special use process. So this amendment would remove tattoo parlors from uh, the, as a regulated use, would allow them as a permitted use in the C2 district. So on the edges of uh, Washington Street um, in those, those plazas, and then it would allow um, salons to provide the services such as the microblading uh, in salons as an accessory use to their primary um, salon services. So it's just intended to allow for a wider variety of services to the residents. 
So, Mario, are, are we making a distinction between a traditional tattoo parlor and other types of permanent skin coloration that is obviously the difference between injecting ink into the skin for a uh, image or putting permanent eyeliner in your eyes or something, whatever that may be. I... Mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't make that, we aren't making that distinction in the definitions. What it is that they are uh, allowing is that if someone is doing the permanent makeup or that sort of thing as an accessory use inside a um, business, then that's an accessory use that could go into any. Um, business that the primary use is a salon, whereas tattoo parlors where the primary, you know, greater than 50% of the square footage is for um, providing tattoo services, that is a permitted use, but they would only be allowed in the C2 district. And if I, correct me if I'm wrong, C2 is on the north end of uh, the village on the side, side and or sides of M24? Correct. I think we have one parlor, we have one parlor there. And that's, and that's, that, and that's, that, that, village i'm sorry that, that's that not that's not in the village okay so we don't have any that are in the village i didn't think so um all right thank you for that clarification is it our intention that we would have no tattoo parlors in the core of our downtown so if you if you look go ahead Joe. so one of the <clears> let me just have map. yep there's the map there is also a c2 district down there by the polyan trail in west burdick so let's see, we're right down here. This is the, the basically the south That's, end. Yep, of Minnetonka. The, the very, very north. There's one parcel on the very, yep. very north end of town. And then there's also uh, the plaza, basically where Art and Dix is at. Is yep. that yep. the only other? So yep. it is a very, very small. Yep. South end, north end, and west end. Yep, okay. that's right. Thank you. There's only a few parcels. And, and let me just clarify a little bit. One of the changes and the reason it was brought up, Mario touched base on it. Before it was in the adult regulated use section. And, and so I think that was especially land use all the way across the board. I think Mario made that distinction, but, and now it'd be a permitted use um, in those C2 districts. So that's the biggest distinction I think on the change is it was always a special use before because it was in the adult regulated use, like, you know, some very explicit adult uses. Yep. Now it's not deemed that way. It's more of a permitted use in the C2 district or a special use in the flex district. And that flex district is way up there on the north end of Glasby. Right. Town, so where where is this change coming from? Do you, was this requested? In a way, about a year and a half ago, the gentleman north of town that you referred to across from the McLaren Clinic, uh, I think it's, it's red, white, and blue or something. Tattoo right. Powder. Right. Uh, it's a veteran. He's a veteran. And he was interested in the uh, a spot in the downtown core. And when he approached Glenn, Glenn talked to me about it. And I said, well, obviously that's not going to work, especially the way the zoning ordinance was. But the conversation Glenn and I had is, you know, tattoos are much less taboo than they were 40 years ago, let's say. Um, it's more accepted. So we wanted to at least kind of look at it. It was brought up. It was discussed. And this kind of a change was looked as a reasonable accommodation. Okay, so what do you, Joe, what in, in your estimation, what do you think the impact of this change would be upon the village? Um, somebody now, obviously the, if that gentleman wanted to move into a place down in the, uh, the south end, like Marketplace Mall, um, they could. They would just come in there and move in. It's a C2, it's not a special use, and it might fill a vacancy in one of those uh, malls or on the west end over there by Art and Dix and the Little Caesars, if a vacancy was coming there, it, this is another possibility that they could uh, fill in a vacancy. Versus mm -hmm. us, it was a pretty tightly regulated before and um, special use process. I think it was kind of a little higher hurdle. Hmm. I'd, I'd like to hear what anybody else thought about this. Um, Leslie, do you have any uh, do you have any comments or questions related to it? Um, I don't have any concerns about this uh, text amendment change um, to allow uh, this as a permitted use under the definitions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Kelly, do you have any uh, do you have any comments, questions related to it? 
No, not really. I, I'm, I'm good with how this is written. Um, I can completely see this, especially for um, in terms of like the eyebrows and the permanent makeup where that could be potentially an issue and it could be a loss of an opportunity. Um, so the only thing that I guess I would ask is, um, you know, Joe, do you feel that there's anything that could be downgrading to our community with not having any regulations on it, just having it be open, if I'm understanding it correctly? Um, well, it'd be almost like any other service type business. It'd be similar to a hair salon again, and it could be a hair salon that does offer the permanent makeup uh, and eyebrowing things that are now they're able to do both. Okay. It, it, so let's say they're already in the plaza down there, uh, the marketplace. Now they would be able to add this um, service to an existing business, perhaps. Um, so that might make it even better for someone to remain viable. Mm -hmm. um, or again, or or someone could come into town that uh, otherwise wouldn't really want to or been able to as, as easily before. Okay. All, all set, Kelly? Yes, thank okay. you. Uh, John, do you have any uh, questions, comments? No, I'm good with, I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, so I, I guess the, 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 kind of the way I look at it is this, is that, all right, um, we have an establishment that's already uptown. Let's just take it, it, it there's two different scenarios here two different kind of um we have one which is just the tattoo parlor itself right and we already have uh, an occupant that's just outside of town now let's say we were to change the ordinance they can only go into very small parcels of property one on the north end one by art and dicks and one and maybe some properties on the south end that wasn't the request the, re the request was to do something downtown so it kind of doesn't help them. It's kind of like a moot point. It doesn't doesn't do anything for us. The other the, the only the only positive side that I see to this is that it might help add services for a spa or somebody or anybody that's doing the microblading or those other comments or those other beauty so opportunities that a, a spa may have that they don't have right this minute. So I'm, I'm a little on the fence with this one where it's almost like it doesn't make sense to, to change it, just leave it as it is. But then I still kind of see that small little thing where, you know what, somebody might benefit from this at maybe in a different location or a different, um, a different avenue. But um, so those are, those are my kind of takes and thoughts on it. So I, I it, that's all, I think that's all basically I have. That's all I have related to my comments related to it. And hmm. can you one more question? Yeah, so sure. Go ahead. If a current spa or beauty service or salon today were yep. to be offering these services already, yep. uh, then would they possibly be in, in violation? Uh, yes, they, they would. So, yeah, they, they would be. They couldn't. They technically couldn't offer it. Let me ask you this, Mario: If um, if somebody, if if a could could a spa or somebody or a spa ask for those type of things, could that be part of a special use permit? Uh, currently, under the current ordinance, yep. the current regulations, if we didn't change anything, um, no, not not real. I mean. I guess that could be one way for do it, but then they would have to go through the special use approval process, okay. requiring you know special use and site plan approval from the planning commission, holding a public hearing, going to village, you know, getting those approvals. So that is kind of uh, extensive for an accessory use to the business, and um, so that would be the issue with it. And then also um, <clears throat> to answer Kelly your question earlier, if they could offer it or not right now. That's part of the reason that also sparked this is because there were some salons that were interested in doing this as a service. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> by it being listed and designated as a regulated use, um, you know, if that spa didn't offer other services more predominantly, then it could undermine the legality of our um, regulated use requirements, which we want to be strong. And we want to, because there are definitely some other more uh, deleterious I guess you could say, uses that are good, really negatively impact the village and that we want those strictly regulated. And so we don't want anything to like undercut that. So if we had any kind of precedent where we were allowing our relegated uses to 
spill into other 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 areas that might undermine growth. I'm not an attorney, but you know that's something I've seen happen to other other communities. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Uh, I just want to follow. So, so in the packet under the adult regulated uses, that there's a just that the whole process is listed in there, and you see the types of businesses that are listed. But yep. if you look in the last page, number D, this is part yep. of the issue too that no adult business or as defined shall be permitted with a thousand foot of any school, library, park, playground, movie theater, skating rink, pool hall, coin operated amusement center, licensed group daycare center. So by leaving it in that um, category, the tattoo or microblading, it, it, it's very, very, very restricted as where it could go. And for those types of businesses, like Mario said, that makes sense we want to have very 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 tight regulations on those types of businesses that are described in that section of the ordinance i think i think what i described before is that the microblading or um, tattooing isn't seen in the same category as those types of businesses as it once was mm -hmm. and again especially when you think about a, a, a spa or a salon they wouldn't be able to be within a thousand foot of Centennial Park, a thousand foot of a school, a thousand foot of a, you know, if, if even if they did come and ask for a special use. Okay. And that, that's part of what I, what I see here is we're going to make a change and it won't really, won't really help us in any way, except for very small pieces of, of the very outskirts of the village. So, okay. You, you could have uh, looked at this and said, we want to just make this a uh, normal retail operation and put it with anyone else that's, you know, like a shoe store or a salon. Sure. That had been going from A to, you know, not Z, but maybe this is a step in the right direction to see what it might be. Although, like you said, it doesn't help the person who wants to be downtown. Yeah. And so it's... I don't, I don't think we have people banging on our doors to, to have this, you know, to have this done. Um, you know, the, the request, at least let's just, you know, separate the two things. One was a, you know, one was a tattoo parlor that was looking for downtown. They, don't, they couldn't even meet the requirements anyways. Even if we were to change this, it still doesn't meet the requirements. So we'd be changing something. We're just changing something just to change it. And it might not, and there's no demand for it. So that's, that's, that's that those are once again those are my yeah. comments related to those things those are that, those are my thoughts and feelings mr chair yes please is there any businesses that this would benefit if this were to pass that's a that's a good question um I, the one thing i could see is that it would just benefit uh property owners because it would open yeah. i mean not a wide range but it's one more tenant opportunity for property owners to have a tenant in the c2 if they're, they're having any vacancies I mean, it's not a big, I, was more big I was more referring to an existing business within the village. Would this benefit them? Help business come into the village? I don't Joe, know if there is a salon in the marketplace mall. I don't believe there is, but I, I don't keep a tally on that well down there. There's possibly. Yeah. If I remember right, there was a spa that was on the, uh, it was on the west side of 24 towards the south end but i don't even know if it's there anymore i believe so, it's north of the c2 area though i think i'm not sure that's just, uh, just okay yeah. all right excuse me you guys there is a spot at marketplace it's on the north end on the north end yes it is oh by the academy uh, sue what's the name yeah. of that which Rooster. one is roosters oh yeah uh, that's a haircut place yes Men's, men's, yeah, haircut, yep. And then I guess in terms of uh, assisting existing businesses, it would open up their opportunity for them to provide another service to residents. So it might be that they have, provide services that would draw people to the city, I mean, excuse me, the village. It might, it might not, you know, I don't know how much in demand that the permanent makeup is and all that kind of thing, but you never know, gives them an opportunity. Um. Okay. Mario, I, I recall this uh, issue being introduced to the Planning Commission some weeks back, and I thought the initial interest did come from um, a business owner or someone who, who sought to, uh, that the Planning Commission would ease the, uh, the language. Am I mis misremembering that? 
There was someone that had applied for a certificate of occupancy for this type of use, and then they ended up, uh, I believe they ended up changing their um, business model to allow, provide other uses in addition to the microcleaning. I think well, I they think, actually wanted to be just a micro place. I think I'd like to make the point that whether there's currently a business uh, in town that could make take advantage of this, um, the, the fact that it, it normalizes certain kinds of tattoo processes, I think, may be may help uh, future businesses consider um, locating in Oxford just because of the um, uh, again, the ease of the restriction for these specific types of tattoo functions and, you know, moving them uh, out of the regulated adult use into uh, permitted uses um, not only doesn't, you know, have a negative impact that we're, we're able to identify, but it has a potential positive impact in the future. So maybe it's worth looking at the long view as well. Okay. All right. And, and one final point on that. And if yep. you look at the, the adult regulated use as it was written before was a special use and it was only a special use available in the I-1 district. So it was only on industrial property. So again, it was tightly regulated because it was lumped in with all the other adult oriented or adult regulated uses. This puts it at a lower uh, rung and again, potentially can have something in, in the uh, more retail type areas. Any other uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, so Sounds like uh, we should call the question. What's that? Sounds like we should call the question. Yes. Uh, so, um, hmm. <laughs> so I. I believe I would, uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept the ordinance as presented. I'll second. Actually, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, your motion should probably should uh, be a recommendation to council to adopt the ordinance. Recommend. Okay. Sorry. No, nope, you're good. A lot of verbiage I know. But <laughs> uh, so say it again, Mario, I'm sorry. I, if you're, if you would like to have it adopted, you would uh, make a motion to recommend uh, Village Council adopt the amend the proposed amendment. Mr. Chair, I'll rescind my second. No. Give me one second. I'm just bear with me. Uh, so, so Mario, you're saying, uh, so the motion to recommend uh, Village Council to accept the uh, sub the ordinance as presented. Uh, so it would be the uh, the terminology specifically. This word, this word, Jack was amazing at create at the motion. That's right. <laughs> we got big shoes to fill. Come on, where are you at, Gary? I'm listening. You're doing a great job, sir. <laughs> okay, so um, so it would probably be so recommended to the um, to the Village Council to, to adopt. Uh, the Adopt. of do I have to say the Article Three, Section Three, Three, Three Point Three Three, One, permitted you? It might be appropriate to say to adopt Amendment A as presented. Okay, to adopt Amendment A as presented. Second. Second. So, Madam Secretary, if you would help me out here, would you reiterate what I just said? Um, I have your motion to recommend to the village council to adopt the amendment to or to adopt the proposed amendment A as presented. Yep. Um, and so I have a second. Old seconded. Okay. No old second it. Madam Secretary, if you please call the roll. Arkles? Yes. Ballard? No. That was a no. Douglas? No. no. Uh, Noel. Yes. Pilak. Yes. Okay. So it looks as though uh, it is a yes. So uh, we it is uh, 
moving forward to the recommendation to the village uh, to the village council um, for approval. All right, uh, that takes us now to uh, Amendment B. Amendment B consists. Pardon me, of Mr. Chairman. One point: Did we ca did we catch all the commissioners on that last vote? I did not. I don't recall hearing Kelly get a chance to vote. Oh, I said yes. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, so that takes us now to Amendment B. Uh, right. Um, Mario, if you take us from there, please. Yes. Um, basically, this is an amendment to uh, clean up a, a miscue, an error on the, in the existing ordinance. Uh, we've just discussed regulated uses. Um, regulated uses are intended to, uh, well, by uh, interpretate by um, ruling by the Supreme Court, uh, certain adult uses are required to be allowed to in a community. They're not allowed to be uh, regulated out of existence. You have to give the opportunity for them to be located somewhere. And so that's why the regulated uses ordinance is in the or in the zoning ordinance. Um, however, I noticed that um, while it identifies and provides, as Joe mentioned, the setback requirements and everything else, it is very good at um, making sure that um, we're constitutionally uh, compliant, but at the same time, uh, have it very, very strictly regulated. Um, we didn't have, we didn't identify that the I-1 was the district that we wanted them to be lo potentially located. So this just identifies that um, regulated uses, if they were to apply, would need special use approval in the I-1 district. So this restricts them to that location, requires them to get special use approval, and then therefore it makes the entire ordinance in compliance. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Yes, please, Kelly. So Mario, with that, um, so we never, so prior to, we never had a, a district that it could apply to, correct? At least not defined, is what you were saying. Correct. It wasn't in the ordinance. I believe Joe mentioned that it was supposed to be industrial. And I generally that's a common practice in, in almost every community because you want to minimize the impact these uses could have on your commercial businesses. So yeah. allowing them somewhere because we're required to allow them somewhere, uh, putting them in industrial is appropriate. And then my, my last question, thank you, Mario. My last question would be, um, so I'm not familiar with this, but with the special use that they would have to um, get approval for, what is the process for that? So for special use, um, the way it works is in every district, there are a list of principal permitted uses, meaning as a property owner, you're granted by right, the ability to um, establish those list of uses, as long as you're complying with the ordinance. Under special use, an applicant, if they wanna establish any of those uses, they first have to come to the planning commission and a public hearing is held. So a public hearing is held, so everyone within 300 feet of the property is notified, an advertisement is placed in the newspaper, and then the planning commission has the ability to review them, these type of uses specifically, and make sure that, and they can actually, you, planning commission, can impose um, requirements with regards to things like hours of operation, uh, noise level, other specific requirements to that use that to make sure that it is, uh, as compatible as possible with the adjacent properties. So rather than an, uh, an applicant with a principal use, just meeting ordinance, existing ordinance standards, you as a planning commission will go over that uh, application and make sure that they uh, are in compliance and that impose other um, appropriate regulations. Okay, and and my and thank you very much. And my big thing with that is that um, with that is just um, trying to recognize and make sure that the community would also be able to voice an opinion on a special use as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. and that's a big big thing about the public hearing because everyone within three hundred feet is notified. So while all these meetings are public, as we know, not always uh, it's not always highly attended. So the good thing about a special use is it triggers uh, at a minimum adjacent property owners' input and anyone that reads the paper in the article, so. Great, thank you. Um, Leslie, do you have any questions, comments? Um, actually, I just want to 
underscore the importance of cleaning up the ordinance so that our liability exposure is minimized. So we're not having challenges because we didn't have language um, to permit uh, an area and identify an area for these kinds of regulated uses. So I, uh, I support the amendment. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, John? We need to move this ahead to the uh, Village Council. Excellent. Uh, Gary? Yeah, I'm agree with that too, Mr. Chairman. I think this is a long overdue and I'm happy to support this as well. Okay, uh, then I'd like to make a motion to recommend to the Village Council to approve the Ordinance Amendment B uh, that designate the zoning district uh, for regulated use as, per, as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second that, this is Pilak. Excellent, thank you, Leslie. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you please call the, the roll. Uh, Ballard? Yes. Douglas? Aye. Nold? Yes. Pilak? Yes. Arkles? Yes. Absent, Helmut and McClellan? All right, thank you. All right, so that has been approved. So now it takes us now to Amendment C, uh, which consists of commercial vehicles. Uh, uh, Mario, please. Uh, yeah, so um, COVID, the COVID situation really brought this to the forefront because we do have a lot of um, residents whose businesses require them to drive a certain type of vehicles. And by working from home, they needed to park these vehicles on their property. However, the current commercial vehicle designation was, was sometimes interpreted to be very broad and sometimes would restrict, restrict uh, certain people that provide essential services, such as plumbers and other kind of contractors, from parking their vehicles in the residential area on their own property. So these are minor uh, tweaks to the ordinance to specifically, uh, to more accurately, I should say, uh, define what, what we call a commercial vehicle and then not only stay giving examples of which commercial vehicles would not be prohibit, be allowed in, in residential areas, but also to list those types of medium and light duty vehicles, other standard vehicles that might just have a um, ladder hoist or might have uh, other types of taller um, uh, bodies on the, on the rear bed that, but are still, you know, appropriate and, and aren't, going to uh, negatively impact a residence if someone's contracting van is located in their, in their driveway. So, the, so this ordinance is intended to provide those uh, provisions and allow that to occur. Awesome. Uh, Kelly. Uh, I have no questions on this. Um, the only thing I will say is that I think that um, a terrific job on this. Um, I, I stand very strongly behind it. I think it was something that needed to be clarified. So thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Leslie? No questions or concerns. I'm all, all for it. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, John? Move this forward as well. All right. Uh, Gary? Yeah, I'm in favor of this too, Mr. Chairman. All right, excellent. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the village uh, uh, to recommend to the Village Council to approve the Ordinance Amendment C on commercial vehicles as presented. One second. No. Uh, uh, Noel has a second. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you please call the vote. Douglas? Aye. Nold? Yes. Pilak? Yes. Arkel? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Absent, Helmuth and McClellan. All right, great. It moves us on to Amendment D, which uh, consists of fences. Uh, <laughs> there's some big changes in this one. <laughs> Mario, if you could take us, please. Yeah, uh, real quickly, this is another example of a minor revision that actually deals with uh, not a big issue, but just if someone strictly read the existing language, they would think that our existing fence ordinances only apply, only apply to single family uh, residences and don't apply to all the other properties in the village. This just eliminates that reference so that that way our, there can be no, um, no question that our fence ordinance uh, regulations apply to all fences throughout the, throughout the village. Excellent, thank you. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to recommend to the village council to approve amendment D on fences uh, as presented. 
I second, second that, gold. Mr. Chairman. All right. I have a second on that. Madam, Se uh, who did that? Was that Gary? I think we both did. You All can right. pick one. Your choice. All right, Gary. Gary. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you please call the vote. Douglas. Aye. Nold. Yes. Pilak. Yes. Arkel. Yes. Ballard. Yes. Absent. Helmuth and McClellan. Uh, excellent. So now it takes us to the last one, Amendment E, uh, clear vision areas. Um, Mario? Yes. Um, so this is intended to clean up some uh, contradictions between two areas of the zoning ordinance that regulate clear vision areas. Basically, the clear vision area is intended to make sure that certain um, improvements that we allow aren't placed in uh, that triangle area that could obscure a driver's vision whether that's on a road intersection or on a driveway. Um, the existing ordinance has language in the uh, general standards ordinance, section of the ordinance, but it also has uh, language in the sign ordinance. So this would uh, just transition everything that's in the sign ordinance into the general standard ordinance, section 6.1, and then uh, it would just, in the sign ordinance, it would just reference all those um, standards. And basically what it is, like I said, it's allowed to, to make sure that nothing is placed, uh, is it 30 inches, more than, more than 30 inches or less than eight feet. So, so that way drivers have a clear uh, view of oncoming traffic. So it's just intended to clear up that contradiction. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Gary? No, sir. I think this is excellent. I support okay. this one as well. All right. Um, so let's just move on to, uh, I'll make the motion to recommend to the village council uh, to approve the ordinance amendment E for clear vision areas as presented. Do I have a second? I'd second that one also, please. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you please call the roll. Vote. Nold. Yes. Ballard. Yes. Arkel. Yes. Douglas. Aye. Pilak. Yes. Absent. McClellan and Helmuth. All right, excellent. Thank you guys for that. All right, that uh, now brings us, uh, so that's uh, concluded. And so now it takes us now to new business. Um, that this is the, uh, our uh, 2020 annual review that we have to do, uh, that we have to do every year. And so, um, Mario, if you'd please uh, present this, if you would, please. Yes. So as uh, the chair has mentioned, um, the State Planning Enabling Act requires every year that the Planning Commission give a summary of their actions to the uh, um, Village Council. And then this, we also take this opportunity to um, identify some projects that the Planning Commission would uh, like to possibly undertake in the, um, in the up upcoming year. The reason for that is to try and make sure that we um, move in, move the village towards reaching the goals inside the master plan. So before you is you know basic summary of the actions that the planning commission uh, was able to do last year. Uh, we only met ten times. That was mainly due to um, you know COVID, and and it was a very different and odd year. Uh, so we met our uh, met ten times. And in those 10 meetings, we've discussed things like the zoning ordinances we finished uh, recommending tonight. We had a handful of uh, sign design uh, reviews, outdoor dining reviews. Uh, finally got um, Village Ridge, helped them get over the, <laughs> the hump to get them approved for their uh, new, uh, complete their condominium buildings. And then uh, we considered the, the proposed um, rezoning of the Lincoln Street and Mechanic Street parcel or the triangle parcel as we call it um, and dealt with their uh, request. Um, and of course we've uh, dealt with the ongoing issue of the adult use uh, or recreational marijuana uh, ordinance. <clears throat> so it's, it's a pretty straightforward summary uh, for the council. But in addition to that, um, I've gone on to make some, and these are all draft, uh, looking for your input on um, potential projects for the planning commission this coming year. Um, first being the master plan review. Uh, the state planning enabling act also um, requires that a community review their plan every five years. Um, and it's 
It doesn't get more detailed beyond that. Um, you know, it could be a very brief review, but the intent is to make sure that uh, what's on the books right now in the master plan uh, is still relevant. And it's still something that, that the planning commission and the community feels it still uh, voices the um, desired goals for the community, like the direction of the village wants to go. So the review, if we did just a review, it would involve um, looking at the goals and objectives in those in the plans, seeing how far we've come to achieve those goals, and then also indicate, once again, the planning commission's opinion on whether those um, goals and objectives in the, in the future land use plan and those types of um, priorities are still relevant. One thing I wanted to note in this, um, this uh, recommendation is that um, recently the um, MEDC, the State uh, Michigan Economic Development uh, Corporation, has this redevelopment ready um, certification process. The intent of the process is to review all the plans, ordinances, the review process, economic development of a community. And if they meet the standards outlined by the state, then the community becomes eligible for economic development grants. Um, so they uh, went through and did a baseline report and they included some um, recommendations. The good thing is, I think, is that uh, we scored pretty high in a lot of the uh, innovative um, requirements of the state uh, and a lot of the things that they suggested were pretty uh, straightforward, things like just making minor tweaks to the uh, um, website. But one of the things they recommended was possibly doing an implementation plan for the master plan. So if you wanted to, you could consider doing that. Uh, an implementation plan would basically be one document that could take all the goals, because right now we have the master plan that was originally adopted in 2005, but then updated in 11. And then we have the um, core, the uh, sub area plans for Washington Street and the other areas. So an implementation plan would be a document that could combine all the goals and objectives of all those documents and create a prioritized single implementation plan that could guide the village for the next uh, five, maybe 10 years. So that's an option for you guys to consider. Um, Another thing within the uh, baseline report was suggesting going through the zoning ordinance and review it for compliance, or excuse me, consistency with the master plan. Now, I think we've been doing this regularly and I don't know if there's something, there's any big uh, change to the, the zoning ordinance that the master plan is calling for that we haven't undertaken. So it could be a pretty brief review, um, but it might identify some of the issues. Uh, in, par in paragraph three, I just suggested, and because we've kind of tried to address this too, is um, there are sometimes new zoning ordinance issues that come up based on, you know, recent trends in the market and recent things that, you know, nobody could have predicted, you know, five, 10 years ago. For example, what, what the industry calls short-term rentals, but what everybody knows is Airbnbs. Um, you know, sometimes communities find that Airbnbs can be pretty disruptive to a neighborhood if they're not regulated and others found that um, they're not so. So that's something that could be um, discussed and maybe an ordinance created if we find it was uh, necessary. And similarly, uh, food trucks. Food trucks have been around for a while. I mean, they've been around forever, but their recent um, you know, uh, popularity of food trucks uh, has required, has caused some communities to regulate them. Now that's mainly because you know, on the one hand, food trucks are a good entry level for a certain uh, residents, and so they could do an easy way to start up a business. But on the other hand, you also have to balance that with people that enter the market, you know, in this way, but then they impact uh, the brick and mortar businesses, the people who have made a substantial investment in the, in the community. So how do you balance those? So that's something that an ordinance could regulate in terms of where they're located, how often they operate, that sort of thing. So there are a lot of different topics from a zoning standpoint that could once again allow, <clears throat> excuse me, allow this opportunity while making sure that we're not negatively impacting property owners and business owners that have invested heavily in the village. 
Mario, I don't want to get into this deeply right now. I think that's a fascinating set of topics to be able to discuss going forward. Um, in regards to vacation rentals, have, have you seen examples of other communities that have put um, ordinances in place to be able to um, regulate that industry to a little bit to make sure they're avoiding some of the pitfalls um, that we could use as a model, perhaps, or even just a point of discussion? Yes, absolutely. There's a lot of different uh, examples. And actually, recently, I've been working on some others that if we wanted to, we could most likely also restrict them, not, not restrict them, but yeah, well, basically, yeah, restrict them. Yeah, it's a restriction of a, of, a, of a sense. And, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, like always, I think we have a tendency to be very pro-business here and we welcome and, and um, try to do our best to support. I obviously, I haven't heard anything at all from a negative aspect of this. And I don't even know how much... Um, you know, Airbnb we have in the neighborhood. I know that when my brothers came to visit for a reunion last summer, I put them in an Airbnb up on uh, up on the lake and they loved it. Of course, outside the village, but um, it was it was very well done, very professional. And I was pleased with the opportunity. And that's the thing, they can be, uh, you know, pretty well done. And a lot of times I personally think sometimes they can just be regulated by um, your existing ordinances when it comes to uh, how they operate. Because if if someone has a loud party or somebody has a lot of people over, you know, which is tip the typical complaint of the Airbnb, you know, whether that person is the property owner who has a mortgage and has loud parties every weekend, or they just happen to be visiting and they're only going to be doing it one weekend, you know, you can't really regulate that from a zoning standpoint. You rely on your noise ordinance. You rely on, mm -hmm. your, you know, other other ordinances that regulate a property owner, no matter how long term their uh, their uh, their lease or their mortgage is, so that's an option too. I mean, that's another aspect of it that sometimes you other communities balance. Mm -hmm. But that but these are just two different examples of two different topics that if we wanted to, the planning commission could consider. Uh, and I appreciate work on. that. Uh, I included historic preservation because that's one of the topics that we've included in our past uh, years action plans. Uh, for everyone just to, you know, also to, um, to back up for a second, you know, this is a list of uh, activities that we could undertake. A lot of times we found that the day-to-day um, -day applications, you know, are the priority for the planning commissions. We don't always get to these. So these are just items that we could consider. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it comes to the historic preservation, yes, Oh, uh, You can finish the sentence, go ahead. I was going to say when it comes to historic preservation that it is listed in the in the master plan under the goals and objectives and it's something that I think is important because it's it take it has a good um, approach to it because it because it specifically says to investigate the public support for the creation of historic districts it doesn't say the village should create one it, it says that you know we should investigate if there's any public support because while historic reservations once again like everything else on the one hand it would benefit because it would preserve those uh, structures that contribute to the character of the village. On the other hand, if written one way, it can be very restrictive in terms of the options for property owners. So you have to find that balance. So what I'd like to say about historic preservation is that the, the current mood um, has shifted in a positive direction. Um, there are now uh, after many years of having been um, uh, suspended or eliminated, there are now historic preservation tax credits once again available um, to businesses and individuals. So that is an economic driver that hasn't been there for a while. Um, and I think also uh, in my field, uh, in, in another community, I have seen a resurgence in interest in historic character and historic preservation, historic issues of all kinds. And um, I think this is a really valuable time to re-examine this as part of a master plan review. So I just want to, you know, say here, here, this is a really important issue to uh, up, bring it up to date because what was said in 2011 no longer applies. Good. I'm with you on that, Leslie. And so then just really briefly, the last two things on, that I created in this draft was just review existing bylaws and just make sure we're consistent with everything in our policies. And then um, training for members, that's something that you know, um, 
it can be very important because it, it uh, provides um, all of you with the ability to get up to speed on some of the newer uh, items coming up. Uh, and when it comes to all the, you know, uh, development related topics and, um, and actually one of the good things might be that uh, with the COVID situation, everyone's gotten used to kind of this <laughs> of everybody staying at home. So there isn't necessarily a need to drive all the way to Grand Rapids or to Marquette or wherever they decide to hold the conference. You could uh, economically participate and gain your knowledge um, from the comfort of uh, our homes. So with that in mind, um, you know, once again, this is a draft list just for your discussion. Um, in the end, um, the report and everything should be forwarded to the council for their um, their consideration and their acceptance uh, in terms of just accepting and filing. But when it comes to these topics, uh, if at some point you wanted to prioritize any of them, um, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe at some point uh, in, in the next couple months, if you wanted to revisit this list, you could consider sending a request to the uh, the council. But you know that's up to you guys and whether you feel any of these are warrant that kind of priority. Uh, so, so Mario, so basically you're saying, obviously you said this is just a draft, just something to give us a guide, at least from the, you know, at least from the proposed action plan is a guideline, right? Yeah. It's just a draft of something that we can consider as what we, what we think might be important for 2021 that we need to discuss or need to address, right? Sure. So do, yes, we need to, every once a year, we need to send our um send our review so do we is it separate or is it do we have to um we have to come back and bring it together so do you know what I'm, so let me kind of reiterate so um do we come back at a later date meaning maybe our next uh our next meeting and then say all right yes we want to recommend uh, this in its entirety or make changes to it or discuss changes or do, are we supposed to be doing that now well, I don't know if you need, you can definitely discuss it now if you like. Um, there isn't a hard deadline to get it to the council, but okay. I think um, if you submitted it with, as a report either this month or next month, I think that'd be appropriate. And then uh, later on, you know, like I said, maybe in March or April, Joe, if that sounds right, that uh, if you wanted to um, send a request to council to consider uh, allocating some funds, that would be up to you. You don't have to do that, but if it's one of those things that you wanted to set aside and discuss specifically, that's an, op that's an option, you know, in the next coming month. Okay. Come in. This, um, Mario, I think this report is very thorough and I thank you for the time and effort that you put into this. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'll tell you what, I have no problem at all in submitting this to the uh, council right now without any further uh, changes. Um, if, the, if the commission um, seems to think that's appropriate. I think this does a very good job of spelling out what we did last year and the idea, the idea of things that we're hoping to accomplish uh, in the coming year. And then uh, if going forward, we decide that we need to ask for some funds to facilitate any of this, uh, at least they have the documentation showing this is what we were planning on doing. That's, uh, just, my, know, that's just my opinion. I hear you. I agree with you as, as far as putting it together. Um, you know, the recommended action plan, I think last year is, as well as, uh, you know, some of these things that we have we had goals in 2020 in our action plan and things that we have that I don't even think we got to, didn't even come close to getting to. And one of the things is I just don't want us to do things or make changes or like, like the uh, short-term rentals, just do things just to do things. You know, some of these things I don't, I don't necessarily think are uh, necessarily relevant that we have to do. I mean, it's something that we can maybe talk and consider, but just not do it just to do it. Do, maybe, do you understand what I'm saying related to some of those? Sure. Okay. And I, uh, I, the reason I like this document is that it 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 brings to the to the forefront at least um, things for us to talk about, and more importantly, to consider. Um, do we need to consider ordinance for vacation rental properties? 
it may very well, because see, I'm with you. I don't think we should do something just for the sake of doing it. We got plenty to do. Yeah. Uh, but, sure. it, you know, at least at least we're showing the council that we're forward thinking and that we are taking things into consideration, uh, whether or not we choose to act on it or not. Um, is an entirely different thing, but at least I like the idea of, of literally of ideas being brought forth uh, for us to discuss and contemplate. Um, you know, we can always at any point in time during any of our uh, any of our discussions or any of our meetings, we can always bring things up as well. So just a, that's just a, a comment of my own. But mm -hmm. uh, Leslie, I thought I saw your hand up. Um, it was, but Joe, did you want to jump in and clarify something? Uh, only uh, the part about uh, budgeting. Um, th there's going to be a small amount in each year for budgeting for some of these classes, row professional services or mechanic or somebody of the like may have a Zoom class or even an in-person class later this summer for one evening. So there's always going to be 500,000 in for some of those things. Additionally, a periodical that I'm used to is planning and zoning news. Uh, it's something I'm going to look at to try to get to the commissioners, the other communities I've worked in. It's a great magazine, has a lot of court cases, had a planning and zoning issues, how those things played out in the courts so you can see if you're contemplating something like that, um, the pitfalls and, and mm -hmm. maybe some things people ought to learn. So by getting those uh, established and then they would show up in your mailbox once a month, it's good reading. And some of those things might prompt some discussions. And again, discussions are fine. If you guys, if we run across something that ooh, a new court case or a new ordinance that got slapped down in court or whatever about short-term rentals, we can just include it as correspondence so you guys can get it periodically. You don't necessarily have to begin the process of establishing a new ordinance like that, but as they come across to us or, or as you have questions, we could just provide you some documentation for a discussion. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I appreciate that, Joe. Mm -hmm. And that is a great magazine. That's one of the, one of the best ones. When yes. Those, those when I first got it, I thought things. it was really boring because it's nothing but it looks like a newspaper on the inside. But boy, you start reading it, and it's quite relevant. Yeah. No pictures, Harley. Oh, darn. <laughs> uh, okay, so what I was going to uh, suggest is that um, really this is a draft document as it's already been presented by Mario. And unfortunately, we have two members of our commission that, that are not present tonight. So I hate to uh, adopt it as is without getting any input from them. If we have a little time, I'd like to suggest that we bring this up uh, at our next meeting and perhaps finalize it then. And that will also give us time to reflect on things or consider other issues that we might feel are important to include. So I propose that we um, wait at least until the next uh, commission meeting to make a final decision on this document. Great comment, Leslie. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm good Kelly, with that. I'm go good with that, of course. I, I support that as well. I think that's a, I think that's an excellent idea. Okay, John. I look at this a little bit a different way. You have a master plan that we have to go do something with because it's time to do it. You've got your zoning ordinances that should relate back into the master plan, and then uh, the historic preservation. I like that because that's the village, that's what we're trying to, the DDA works along with the DDA. The uh, the bylaws, you always need to look at our bylaws, but when we come to number three, the new relevant ordinance issues with food trucks and short term, that's a, that's a changing, as some of that's driven by as need. So if you have an issue come up in the village that we don't have coverage in our ordinances, then you're gonna push that in and say, we need to look at that a little bit. So that's, that's kind of the one that I see changing the most. And I like the idea about food trucks because we're putting one together for the uh, township in regards to food trucks as we speak. That was, okay. uh, Jack, that was Jack Curtis's and my favorite uh, hot button right there, John. Uh, both of us were adamantly, oppo adamantly opposed to food trucks. So um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm anxious to see that one move forward as soon as we can. Okay. Look at that handsome guy right there. <laughs> all right. well, uh, sorry, sorry, Gary. I'm just. I'm, That's I'm all right. To... Okay. You were you were looking for the handsome guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> off. Was... I'm like, all right, Gary. Yeah, nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Tall and handsome, right? No, I was talking about Midori's dog there. Midori's oh, yeah. dog made 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 us uh, a quick a quick join. 
All right, okay. I'll relinquish. So, uh, we can I go don't ahead. Think we have to... So we don't have to. We don't have to vote on this, uh, do we, Madam Secretary? Do we? We don't have to vote that we want to uh, post. Maybe not postpone it, but just review it uh, during our next meeting. Uh, yeah, I think it would be fine either way. You could you could make a motion to postpone till the next meeting, but uh, like Mario said, there's you're you're not required to um, act on it tonight, or uh, there's no timeline for you. So, okay. Um, so I'm not going to make a motion to uh, to uh, for to push off to the next meeting. I'm just going to say we're going. We'll, we'll discuss it and uh, at the next meeting. Okay. Sound good. Sounds great. Excellent. Um, so uh, new business is concluded. Now it brings us to public comment. Uh, is there anyone in the, in the uh, public? I has have one or two, perhaps. Um, Super Sardi, I think you're the only one left on here that's from the public. No comment. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, no public comment. We're all set. Right. All right, uh, counselors, do you have any uh, comments? I have two things I'd like to bring up, uh, Mr. Chairman, please. Go ahead, Gary. Uh, the first, I have an uh, ongoing question about the status of uh, Dave Weckl's development on East Burdick. And um, I, I desperately like to know what the status and really what the issue is with that development. Um, I'm sorry to say that I think his buildings have become an eyesore uh, in their status of um, semi, semi, even less than semi-completion. And um, I'm very disappointed in uh, what I thought was going to be a showcase project has now lingered on for three and four years. And I'm wondering if we're ever going to see the end of that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping that there's a really good reason for why this has taken so long. And, um, and if it doesn't get going pretty soon, I think I'm going to run out of patience and I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just really beside myself with this. And I don't know who can answer that. I mean, Joe, maybe you okay. can. I, I can speak to it briefly. Okay. Um, a lot of the, uh, the, the parking lot across from Burdick Street Equipment, the parts uh, on the south or the east side of Mill, there was some pretty significant push there right towards the end of the summer to put the, all the underground drainage and drainage structures and all that part is in. Uh, you see the uh, sidewalk, the parking areas, the open cuts across Burdick Street to run new water mains was put in in two different locations, one to feed the 32 East building, the one on the northwest corner or southwest corner of Mill and Burdick. That was open cut, entrenched and, and uh, fire suppression and water was put in right before the fall. And then the open cut down by Burdick Street, Street Equipment came in with a water main extension. That water main extension was ran from there all the way down to Stanton and it connected down there. So those were accomplished. A lot of, that's a lot of underground work that was all put back together. You don't really notice. Um, but they set the beams up there in that 32 west or 32 east. Right. I thought that was going to continue. Once that beam was set, they stopped. Yeah. Now we have a new, um, McKenna has switched out our building official again, uh, to my dismay. Uh, not your fault, Mario. And um, Jim Wright showed up and he's wondering the same thing. And he reached out to Weckl and Weckl told him he's supposed to have some new materials delivered 1st of February. Uh, so I am really hoping to see something happen there because that stuff has been piled up over there for quite some time. Joe, am I being unreasonable in my dissatisfaction? No. All right. I, you know, because I don't want to overreact, but I was, um, I was on the team that originally granted him that PUD uh, to make that happen so long ago. And uh, he spoke so well of how this project was going to go. I thought for sure it was trying to turn into a showcase for this village. And I'm disappointed. Several things have happened. I think, um, some of the delays and some of the his on his end caused his tenants to leave left him a little concerned how was he going to fill the building um, then last spring he was just going to try to do the underground work before the uh, detour took place because we didn't want to do it once the detour took place we didn't want to shut down burdick street in that section um, of course then when the pandemic everything stopped so he couldn't get the done before so we had to push the water line work till later um, so again i think uh, the market and then coupled with the pandemic and then fickleness perhaps of yeah. uh, a tenant or two might've all come together. And I tell them, build it, they'll come, right? 
you got to pay to build it. I think it's the problem. I know that's the problem. <laughs> All right. So I, I appreciate that. It's just yeah. as long as somebody else is thinking about this besides me. And I'm grateful that you are Joe. The, the, the current PUD extension is only through July one of this year. Yeah. All right. I expect that we'll be re, uh, revisiting this topic again. Uh, the second um, uh, with your uh, forbearance, Mr. Chair, uh, the second issue I would like to bring before the commission is the fact that the village council is going to hold a virtual town hall meeting on the 26th of January at 7 p.m. Uh, to discuss and hear residents' views on allowing marijuana businesses in the village's industrial district. Um, and if there's somebody, I'm sure there are many people here who are way smarter than me, they can maybe explain to me as what the heck is going on. You know, we, uh, we uh, as, a, as a state, we voted on this and approved it. Uh, as a village, the village overwhelmingly approved the fact that uh, marijuana was, uh, recreational use of marijuana was legal and that businesses could be created along with uh, ordinances that would, would uh, regulate it. And now suddenly the, the uh, you know, we went to a lot of trouble and a lot of time to create a very powerful ordinance uh, for the village to consider, and now they're throwing it back at the uh, the townspeople and asking them what they want to do. I I I'm at a loss to understand this. Maybe somebody can help me understand. I I can help. I think, and I don't pretend to be smarter than you, as you stated. But I'm going to try to fill in the blanks. Um, I think the initial town hall. I, I think that was had right at the beginning of this. Uh, we had a person from MML come, and we had a few, probably 20, 30 people in the council chambers. That was to get the kind of a feel for the community at, at that onset, whether they want to go down this path. It was moderately attended. Uh, uh, several of the people in the room weren't from the village, they were from out of the village. Uh, and then that started going down the track with you guys on the planning commission. I think several people around town then it kind of saw after that had started, the process started, they're like, oh, they're considering this. And they had some feedback, some are for, some are against. We've had people at the council chambers meetings over the last year or two think this is a crazy idea. So I think council for one wanted to go back and retest uh, some feedback. Now that's more aware of what's happening because I don't think it was a full awareness when it started out going down this path for one. Secondarily, we've had to make a few changes as you're aware, Mr. Davis, uh, through court cases. Several of those things have even finalized or been smoothed out one way or another in the last 90, 120 days we've had to make some changes. One of the major changes recently is he's not so sure we can have the 500 foot setback from a public park, which then would put the industrial property by Lakeville in play where it was out of play before and on purpose. Um, that only came to light in the, within the last week. So some of those changes have prompted uh, changes in the ordinance that were in there for a specific reason. And um, so there's just a, a feeling from some of the councils say, you know what, let's just go back and make sure this is where we want to go and where we want to be. I think there's some concern because our attorney, Mr. Davis, as you're aware, is he's already wrapped up in uh, several legal ends of things with some communities who are learning the hard way um, what not to do. And so council wants to just get a good feedback from the village residents as they continue to move forward. All right, so you don't interpret this as them getting cold feet? No. Okay. All right, good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I'll look forward to attending this meeting then. Um, that's uh, One more clar clarification. I'm sorry. So um, this is, I'm showing, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay, when I do this, I, I'm lost if you're seeing what I'm seeing. So this draft ordinance that's on there now is the one that was from September. That's now had to be changed. Bob just sent it to me this week, and that will be changed out tomorrow. So the map, of course, will have to be updated too. And Mario, perhaps, I think you did this map for us. Um, it may have to change now because with the showing the setback up here would take out that industrial property up. This is an industrial property. It's shown within the setback, so therefore not eligible. Well, now Bob said some of the courts, this is a scripter park right here, and this is all park property. He said, you might get away with 200 feet from the entrance of the park. He's not so sure you can go 500 feet from any park property. And actually this piece right here, this little triangle up here is actually Oxford Lakes subdivision park area. Our property is more like this. So again, that kind of puts us in play up there when it wasn't, and it kind of makes some changes that have happened. Mm. 
So Joe, can I, I'm sorry, Chairman, can I ask a question? So Joe, this would also entail then that um, property getting even closer to Round Lake and Scripter Park would be a potential, correct? So like, well, these, all the purple ones down here are in play, so to speak. Mm -hmm. potential adult use marijuana right and those are the i uh, industrial zone districts down there mm -hmm. if the setback is now less than the 200 feet it might instead of 500 feet it'll bring a couple more of these parcels in play probably right here mm -hmm. uh, additionally the we had it's where the the where is that depot the industrial stamping plant area is up in here yeah it's right, it's right where you're at right, right there right there that is industrial property too. And we initially said industrial property on Glassby or industrial drive. Well, Bob's consideration now is anything in the I-1 district. So technically this property up here would be back in play also, even though it's occupied by a stamping plant for the right price, they could leave. Yep. So there's those kind of changes that have been through the courts. My personal opinion is I'm, I'm not against this. It, in, in the realm of should it be allowed in, in somewhere. I would just like to see other people be the canaries in the coal mine for a couple of years before we become right. one of them. Yeah. I think that's, a, that's the biggest thing is that we're trying to be cautious from a legality standpoint. It's not about if everybody's approved it and everybody's for it or, or if we should, you know, it's more of a, from a legality standpoint, because there's quite a few municipalities that are getting sued over it. And we just want to make sure that and I believe, and I'm not just to be that we are covered from, from all those aspects. Because yes, and, and I'm happy that Mr. Davis is involved in these. I'm just as happy he's involved on somebody else's dime. <laughs> it's very costly when we would have to get involved. And that's funny that the village doesn't have to fight, right? So yes. I mean I get I get the cautiousness. It's it's very um it's very it's 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 a wise idea to be cautious from a legality standpoint. Agreed. It's very new. Agreed. Oh, yep. can I ask another question. Um, so with the legalities that that Bob Davis is currently involved in, is is it situations where a uh, municipality did not have an ordinance? No. No, it's where they had it. It's just there was holes. In the right. The way it was rolled out. The way they decided the number of uh licenses in a, in a city might have been arbitrary how would you come up with seven how'd you come up with five because if you had six i would have been in now you chose five i'm suing you um you know those type of things okay there, there's a lot of different variations of why you know they, they're they're trying to find reasons why they're not part of uh being able to do their business because sometimes there's a certain amount of businesses that are allowed in an area and if you're the the odd man out you want to be part of it. So you're going to do everything you can to try to be a part of it. So it's just, yeah. there's, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of moving pieces. And, and, and just, I'm sorry, go ahead. And no, go ahead. Just to speak, generally speaking, the old medical marijuana, right? It was the, the, you had to opt in or opt out, the village opted out of the medical marijuana, but the law states you can still be a licensed caregiver and provide to your six patients currently. And that's still available in the village. I mean, it's a little and Joe, you know, that's a good point too, because that's one of the things that um, every community has been dealing with. I mean, I've got, I've got some, I got some horror stories for you guys, if you really yeah. want them. So and in the end, the good thing is that the Supreme Court recently just allowed um, regulation by some, me yep. of them as well. Mm -hmm. So I've started adopting regulations in other communities to get them out of single family because I found a right. strategy to get them out of the single family neighborhoods because yeah, yeah. they were causing havoc. So, and then now with the adult recreational use, um, it was dec decriminalized, right, Gary? The people spoke. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you, Mr. Douglas, can grow your own marijuana in your garage or for your mm -hmm. own use or in mm -hmm. your basement, mm -hmm. um, all you want. Um, you can sit well, in your backyard and partake because you're on your private property. Mm -hmm. um, you can drive around with it in the backseat of your car. It's decriminalized. Um, so, so it has, no matter what happens here with this particular ordinance, those freedoms and those aspects being decriminalized have already- are That's already, already been addressed, of course. Yeah, they're already available to the people. Yep. So. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Those were the two points I wanted to bring up. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Of course. As we, uh, 
as we move on, does, do we have any more uh, comments, questions from the commissioners? All right, uh, so we're all set. So that takes us now to um, uh, commissioner comments related to um, Oxford Township Planning Commission. Uh, Jack would normally give us an update related to that. Do we, Joe, do we have, how does that work now? Uh, well, Mr. Noel, I believe you are the representative on the Township Planning Commission as well too, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, okay. There you go. We did not meet last month. We're gonna meet tomorrow night. I'll be glad to bring information to and from. Tomorrow night, we're gonna to be talking about food trucks. So that'll make Gary very happy. Yay. That we're, for, we're forwarding that onto the, the intent is to forward it onto the, uh, the township board. Okay. Excellent. Um, thank you, John. Uh, ZBA has nothing to report. Mr. Chair? Yes. If I could though. So yeah, ZBA, yeah. The ZBA does need a planning commission rep. Um, Rose was the planning commission rep that went to the ZBA. I've been reviewing the Zoning Enabling Act and looking into that, how um, the person gets on there. They're still appointed by the, the village president. It has to be someone who's a resident because not all members of the planning commission need to be residents, i.e. Mr. Noel. So I've, I've kind of been working with Kelsey in the last week or two to get a memo to her. We will need, A, if there's a volunteer on here, that would be great. If there's multiple volunteers, then Kelsey would probably choose between them uh, as a recommendation to the rest of the council. Um, so if anybody is interested in being the ZBA rep from the planning commission, uh, feel free to send um, uh, Ms. Cook, Mrs. Cook, a uh, Kelsey, a email. Her email is on our website, mm -hmm. phone her, whatever. Um, just to let her know you're interested because that's something that she will have to be addressing too. Because right now we only have four members on there and uh, we do need uh, to have someone from here. Well, somebody from uh, somebody from the planning commission has to be on the ZBA. Yes, and in some instances it has to be. In some instances it may be. I I, I just reviewing it again last week. I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it was with with the villages. It has to do with populations and things like that too. Um, some are may and some shall. Okay. Townships, townships. I think it is has to be, and I think the village it, it is allowed. Okay. Um, it's always a good idea. Um, I'll probably I'll reach out to I'll reach out to um, Kelsey. Okay. And that's one of those things that, uh, like when Terry puts together a, a, an orientation pack, Mr. Nold and such, the, the Planning and Enabling Act, uh, they believe maybe the Zoning and Enabling Act are both um, part and parcel of those uh, orientation packets. And it's always good to review those uh, on these boards. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Um, thanks, Joe. Um, DDA? Uh, I'm, I'm a member of the DDA, but I'm a non-voting member. I'm an ex officio. So okay. I do attend those meetings. Um, and Pete is not here, I see. So uh, some of you may, most of you may, some of you may not know that on the December 21st meeting, the DDA director was uh, let go. He was given his 30 days notice um, by the time. So by the end of this month, uh, our former D direct, DDA director, Glenn Pape will no longer be. Um, the process started a few weeks ago through the committees on the DDA to uh, investigate an interim at Friday nights, I'm sorry, last night's meeting, they chose an interim uh, DDA director, Ms. Kelly Oles um, Westbrook. Uh, she be she came into the office today. She's gonna be working 25 hours a week on a part-time basis um, while the search for the new full-time executive director begins. Those ads should go out tomorrow. Um, the DDA is also uh, involved in some grant work that's going on through Oakland County, part of the CARES Act money. Um, heaters for the outdoor restaurants. And this is dedicated to restaurants specifically. Um, you'll see some igloos type structures going up. There's uh, three of them coming around town and one igloo. The igloo will be delivered to 5-1 Diner in the morning. The DVW has, um, has put that together and we'll be putting together the igloos as well. They're supposed to be delivered Thursday. 50 um, heaters for the restaurants, uh, not only in the village, but outside the village north, like the Birdies place up by uh, Myers, uh, 925 Social up there. Uh, and I always call it the old CRA plant. I forget the name of it, but um, <laughs> that's what I remember it as. Yep. Um, it's a legacy so, center. There you go. Legacy center. So, um, so D DDA is, is uh, the entity that had to go and be signed up for that along with the chamber, working with the chamber to get that list together for those restaurants to have this equipment um, channeled to them through the DDA. And that should be taking place uh, later this week. Um, and 
they're, they're hoping to move forward. The next 60, 90, 120 days are going to be um, kind of different as somebody is in there trying to part-time get to her feet on the ground, um, start working for the DDA. And at the same time, the DDA is going to be searching for a permanent uh, executive director, hopefully by spring, late spring, maybe have that accomplished. Excellent. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, that brings us to the conclusion. Um, so, Kelly, congratulations. You made it through your first, uh, through your first meeting. Thank you. <laughs> John, welcome aboard. Great Thank to you. see everybody now in the, in the beginning of the first of the new year. So uh, here's, here's to us in 2021. Um, I would like to make a motion to adjourn uh the village of oxford planning commission meeting uh, do i have to give a date do i have to give a time and a date i forget just the time uh at 8 37. i'll I second, second. <laughs> we got plenty of seconds i think we got a second third and maybe a fourth in there somewhere <laughs> sounds like we're ready to roll um, that's it <laughs> um madam secretary if you please call the vote uh, Nold? Yes. Pilek? Yes. Arkold? Yes. Douglas? Aye. Ballard? Yes. And Helmuth and Quellen are absent. Excellent. So we are adjourned. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a, have a good evening. See you soon. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys.